Hello gamers, you're watching another Feed the Beast tutorial here on Nerd Life. On today's episode of the Feed the Beast tutorial series on Nerd Life, we're going to be looking at the IC2 cables and electricity in general. So let's head into the building. Now as you can see, I've got six platforms here set up with different wire types with a little bit of information on the signs in front of them. Uh, we're going to go over each thing and how the electricity moves through them, how packets work, ticks, what ticks mean, etc. But first we're going to do a little brief tutorial on how to gather rubber because you're going to need rubber to make all these uh, cables insulated. Otherwise they will electrocute you if you touch them. So as you can see, you climb to the top of the building and I have some trees set up up here. Now these are rubber trees, and the way you can tell they're rubber trees is because on the very peak of the tree there's about a two block stack of awkward leaves on the top, and that's how you can tell if it's a rubber tree. You look out over the horizon you find a tree with an awkward two stacker on the top, and that's a rubber tree. Now the next step you want to take is you want to look for these little spots on the side. They're orange in the default pack like this, but if you have a different texture pack, they're probably easier to see. Um, and what you want to do is you want to prune up the side of the trees so that you can see the bare bark of each side so that you can identify and locate the spots. Because what you want to do after you find them is you want to use a tree tap like I have in my hand to gather the, the sticky resin, as they call it, from these little spots. In order to make a tree tap, it's very simple. You just need practically any wooden planks, put it in the shape of the tap, and there, voila, you have a tree tap. The tree tap has fairly low durability, so after several uses it will break. However, the cheapness of the tree tap makes up for it. Once you have your tap, you can go up to the spot and right click on it, boom, and it's going to shoot out some sticky resin, as you can see, and you're going to be able to gather it, and it'll leave a little indention where the, the spot was. Now you have two options, you can just keep right clicking on this and hope that you get more resin, but it wants you to deplete it and it disappears and will not produce any resin. So if this is on your, on your rubber tree farm, then uh, don't do that, but if it's just out in the wilderness and you're finding your first rubber tr uh, rubber trees, then go ahead and tap it out. Once you've done that, you can chop the tree down and get saplings of your own and make your own farm closer to your base. Once you have sticky resin, you basically have rubber. All you have to do at that point is get yourself a furnace and cook that resin up and it will turn into rubber. So we're going to head back down. And as you can see, we're going to start off on this side, and we're going to go over basic energy flow and how it works. And then we're going to go over each individual wire and what they're used for and what they're good for. Now, this is an ultra-low wire. This is the cheapest, essentially. It's not insulated. You can't insulate it. And it uses tin, I believe. And, it, and as you can see, I've got EUP and EUL. And what this stands for is Energy Unit Packet. An EU is the basic unit of measurement that IC2 is going to use. Uh, red power energy types are like MJ, which is Minecraft Joules, I believe. But this is EU, and EUP stands for Energy Unit Packet, and the packet is how energy travels through wires. It gathers up ticks of energy into a capsule, and then it shoots that capsule through to your, in, to your machines. EUL stands for Energy Unit Loss, and that means that over a certain distance wires will start losing energy. Now in this case 1 slash 40 stands for one energy tick lost per every 40 strands which is why this one is actually relevant because it has a really long energy energy loss strand count because and that means if you have a machine really far away it won't lose too much energy between here your energy provider and your energy user unfortunately it has a really really low 5 EU per tick now one thing I would like to note is that ticks aren't to be confused with seconds ticks happen about 20 times in a second about give or take not exact but uh, if you calculate it that's about how much it comes out to about 20 so every second you're getting a hundred EU from what it, from this through this, uh, in, in basically. So 
by getting 100 EU per tick, you could go forever with this thing and not lose even a fraction of your energy that's being shipped through it. Now, the problem with that is 5 EU is really, it's still really low. And if you're using multiple machines, you're going to be, you're not going to get the energy that you want from that. The copper cable, on the other hand, is your is basically your go-to cable early on. It's the one you're going to use the most until you can upgrade to say the the fiber glass, the glass fiber cable there. And this one runs at 30 t 32 EU per tick, and that's a pretty solid. It's it's not great, and you're still going to have energy issues if you're running three or so machines from like a coal generator or something like that. Uh, and that's not based on your cable. It's mostly based on your your generation, how you're generating this energy. This one has a very low EUL though. It, every five strains you're losing one, which is it's low compared to. Uh, it's hard to explain, but um, this one's pretty good though. It's not terrible. You're going to be using this a lot, so this is the one you're probably going to be wanting to build right at the very beginning. You're going to want to get your rubber, and you want to get your copper, and you want to make a copper cable because this is your go-to. Once you have surpass the need of the copper cable when you need something a little bit better you might go up to the gold cable the gold cable has a really high EUP meaning that every packet that it sends through is can be 128 in size so if you have a generator that's sending out about 1 EU per tick that's about 20 EU every second you're not going to need anything above the copper cable but if you're using a larger, maybe uh, advanced solar panels or something like that, then you might need this, depending on your system. Um, because if you have a large farm, maybe it's producing 20, you have 20 solar panels that produce one, and they're all going into this cable, then you might need something larger. The problem with this one is that it has a very, very low strand rating. So like for every two or so it's it's actually like 2.5 or it depends because there are multiple versions of the gold cable you can have uh, various various installations two times insulation and so forth and depending on that it'll change by like a tenth or a hundredth and but it all rounds up to about two so after two you're gonna start losing after two you're gonna start losing it etc uh, but it's but because it, it handles such a high rating of EU, you could technically still per, go over long distances with this without much loss. Depending if depending on your how much energy you're actually producing, it may not it may cancel it out. But just because you're of the sheer quantity of uh, EU per tick and the EU per packet that you're sending out. Now we're onto the glass fiber, and this is sort of your end game unless you're nuts. But um, we'll go into that later. Glass fiber handles 512 EU per tick, and it has a loss rating of 40, just like the first one. That means that it doesn't start losing any energy per tick until you hit the 40 mark. And I will give you a tip to expand that pretty easily um, in a minute. The, the problem with the glass fiber cables is that they require diamonds to make, and they're fairly expensive in that way. So they, that's why they're considered in-game, because they're really good, but they're also fairly expensive. Then you can move to the HV cable, which is going to be good for really high, really, really, really in-game stuff. Nuclear reactors, etc. And it handles 2,048 EU per tick in packet size. So it can basically handle everything in your arsenal, your energy production arsenal. So... This is pretty good if you're going to be going from your 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 energy production, your reactor or whatever the case is, to a battery box. And then from the battery box or the transformers and stuff, you can then move on to your machines. So you don't have to use a whole lot of this. And the reason you don't probably don't want to use a whole lot of it is because after the like the one, it uses it loses one. Then you have a super conductive wire. I don't even have this installed in this Feed the Beast. It's going to be hit or miss because it's actually a Greg's Tech item. The super conductor wire is extremely expensive, but it is basically lossless. And it, it's infinite 
and it 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 does like a million or a hundred thousand EU per tick. I can't remember which exactly, but it's really high, higher than you're ever gonna need. And it also is literally lossless over distances, so you can put the wire however many times. The problem, of course, is that it is expensive, like all things in Greg's tech. Now, what I was telling you earlier is there's an easy way to expand your the the. For instance, if you have the, your fiber glass fiber cables and you've hit the 40 mark, so you have 40 strands out this way, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna start losing energy now. Well, all you really have to do is Get yourself a bat box or something, something that you have, that's easy to make, you can get a bat box, and then you just put it here, and then start over again, and it will refresh the length. After this point, it starts over counting, basically, so this could be 40, and then it'll, it'll be like, okay, something starts over, and this will consider 1 again. So that's an easy tip for you guys, if you have an issue with wanting to transport power over long distances. And um, I know this is not the most technical tutorial, honestly. I don't even understand it completely, but hopefully you guys have learned a little bit on how energy movement works, as well as what kind of cables will work for you depending on what kind of job you're trying to accomplish. And uh, if you guys have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them and, and give you a little bit more in depth of an answer. And um, hopefully you guys have learned what you need to know at the very least. So until next time, until the next tutorial, Please feel free to ask any other questions about, if you have suggestions for other tutorials you'd like to see. I'm going to start doing more advanced tutorials soon. And uh, until next time, thank you for watching. Hopefully you guys learned something. This has been Ash here on Nerd Life. Play on.